Um, uh, we are. Are these all recording? Does somebody have a timer about to sure. be set? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. We're we're live. Yeah, we're live. Have we're, yeah. We. This is. Yeah, we're live. We're live. So welcome back. The two rights make a wrong. That's Daniel. That's Russell. And with us, as usual, is uh, Lilo and Carl. Yep. What's up, guys? How are you doing today? Peachy. 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 And, right. a, and, a, and a great from Carl. So I want to bring this up really quick. Um, I don't know if any of the intro might have caught you. But I, maybe 10 minutes ago, I looked at you and I said, why are you dressed as a twat? And you said, I was golfing. Don't worry, I, I'll change. And that's what you came in. Came in with yeah, I knew I knew it wasn't gonna be better. I knew it wasn't gonna be better, but <laughs> but vacation, button that I'm in, top I'm button. In, no yeah, vacation no. mode. I'm gonna undo you're not one in more. vacation mode. You just got back from vacation, and I know. you don't need any more vacation. I'm still on vacation here. No, stop. Okay, I'll stop. It. Okay, we're right. not even monetized, and you just prevented us from becoming that. It's not true. I didn't show any nips. So, so anyways, but yeah, this was my vacation garb. I kind of it's comfy. It's nice and cool and airy linen shorts. But I came back from Mexico and I am still as white as all get out. I mean, you're pretty red, actually. Well, that was probably from golf today. Oh, okay. Yeah. How was Mexico? It was fun. It was uh, It was good. Uh, saw a lot of sea turtles. That was dope. And also, I always knew sea turtles were big. But I didn't know they were absolutely massive. These things are like... Their shells are like that big. Yeah. Yeah, and but we would walk at nighttime Could and you a not from Finding Nemo. Yeah, but that doesn't give me any sort of real sense of scale. Sure, it does. No, it doesn't. That turtle was huge. I mean, you know what a clownfish is. You know, a clownfish is like that big. It's like the size of that turtle's eye. No, he was bigger than that. I don't know about that. Yeah, but it was really cool because I, at nighttime the sea turtles would like wash up on. On the shore, they just wash up. <laughs> they'd like try their hardest to move, which they can't really move very well. They dig a big old hole, lay like up to like two hundred eggs, mm -hmm. and then they go on back. And then once they hit the water, so they are just they the size? Away. Are they tiny at that point? Then the eggs, yeah, the eggs are probably no. Like, the turtle, what turtle? Well, if they if they're that big and then they lay like two hundred eggs, do so they just <laughs> and now the turtle's like that size no. afterwards? No, the turtle's the same size. It just poops out all of its mass. It's the same size. But then, lays it but they have all these really people. They're egg. very protected down there, so they have people who then go out find the trails of the turtles at like four in the morning, harvest all the eggs, and then they have blocked off areas and they mark it what the date that they harvested them and everything. It's kind of cool. What do they harvest them for? To to, eat to, them? to protect them. No, they harvest them and then they put them in a sanctuary. Is that turtle egg pen. soup? No, that's no. Why not? Because it's not allowed. Which that's what's weird to me is like I don't know if these sea turtles are like endangered that they need protecting because if they're laying two hundred eggs at a time and there's there was probably there was probably a half a million eggs just as we were walking on the beach there was probably a half a million eggs in these pens like there was tons of eggs yeah but I think like less than one percent of them survive I'm not sure if that's true I think it is can true. we find out what percent of baby sea turtles survive. But it is sad because we looked up that they never ever they don't like go and like meet up with their family. They no. just they just go and then they end up meeting random turtles. Mm -hmm. So they don't know who their mom is. No. I don't think they need it. No. 1 in 1000 hatchlings will survive to adulthood. That is less than 1%. That is that is less than 1%. That is 0.1%. Mm -hmm. So you were wrong. I said less than 1%. Well, I thought you said 1%. No. Oh, okay. All right. Well. That is that is not a lot. That's not it, a lot of right. A lot of sea turtles, but it's surprising to me then just how many of them were coming up on shore. But though. if there was a half a million, that's a lot of sea turtles. Less than one percent of those surviving is still, I think, greater than like an endangered number. Wouldn't half? Well, wouldn't that? Wouldn't wouldn't like point one percent of that be five hundred? Somewhere around there. So that's actually not a lot. Holy crap! A lot die. Yeah. One in a thousand survive? Yeah. That is insane. Dude, they're, everybody eats them. Like I said, turtle egg soup is a delicacy. I have never heard of turtle egg soup. I've heard of turtle soup, but they're not making it out of sea turtles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, turtle egg soup. No. 
Yeah. I'm not sure if this sea, is real. Sea turtle. They just boil them because the shells are so soft. It kind of becomes like a dumpling inside of the soup. You're making this up. I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Doesn't that sound delicious now it that we talk actually, about it? No, because the shell still. But like, you know what isn't soft? Hey, the turtle one of you chefs shell. that have those weird restaurants. You know which ones I'm talking about. I just winked at you. I want some turtle egg soup. Like, I want to eat one of those dumplings. You look too like intense. When you're saying that, calm well, I was, down. I was trying to, I trying know, to access the correct people. There. I know, but you're it's like, like the, staring. It's like the ones with like zebra meat. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Zebra. I want to eat like a rhino horn. It's all goat. Yeah. I mean, okay. If that happens, <laughs> I'd be really mad. I'd be really, really mad. Do you get that reference? No, that was from the office. <laughs> but yeah. Um, that'd be funny though. But yeah, but no, but the thing is, sure, the the eggshell might be soft, mm-hmm. but you know what's not going to be soft? The turtle shell that's developed inside of the egg. We just don't let it develop. We let it yolk up like a chicken's egg. I'm not. So it'd have to be unfertilized. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, but I don't think turtles, turtles don't lay unfertilized eggs. Or do we know about this? Actually, Lilo, I think we I'm did. I'm pretty I think, sure they do. I think we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. No, we talked about birds laying on fertilized yeah, eggs. Yeah, but I thought, I thought you said... I'm pretty sure female turtles, turtles just turtles lay the too. eggs in the ground and then the male turtles just fertilize them. Yeah. No, 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 no. That's not what happens at all. That's not... Nope. Yeah, I don't know. That's, how what, do, that's, what, that's how we thought chicken eggs were fertilized, and that's not how, how it works. How do turtles have sex? Nope. Chickens aren't turtles. I know, yeah. but this isn't how turtles <laughs> do it either. Yeah, they don't need them. They don't need them to be fertilized to lay them, I don't think. Yeah, we can get unfertilized turtle eggs. Okay. Turtle, turtle, but egg but the soup. eggs are fertilized before they're laid. The, like the they have sex and then the eggs get fertilized. How inside do turtles of them. have sex? Well, they have like really weird like octopus. You know, we need you know the VPN. alien. We you know need, that we need like a dedicated computer with a VPN so we can we can Google certain things. But you know, like the baby alien from Alien. Yeah, that like latches onto the faces. That's yeah. what turtle penises look like. Which end? At least that's what tortoise penises look like. Wait, wait, like the. The thing the, that the actually face hugger, onto you. the yeah. face hugger, yeah, that's what a pe- that's what a turtle penis looks that's like. That's what like a tortoise penis looks like. So tortoise. I, I'm not. I, I'm I don't want to eat tortoise eggs. What's wrong with tortoise eggs? Uh, tortoise are just, they're not cool. <laughs> Go with turtles, but specifically sea turtles. Yeah. All right. I mean, yeah, but not tortoise. Mm. Not tortoise. Those things, they live longer than everybody. We uh, they live a long time. We saw a guy with a severed leg, and then he died. So wait, what? In Mexico. Okay. So we saw a guy that got his leg cut off in a car accident. Like actively right in front of you. We saw him. We didn't see the car accident happen, but we saw the guy laying on the ground. Okay. You know those guardrails on the side of the road? His car plowed f- like front end first into the thing, probably went 30 feet into the guardrail. Him and his driver's seat just got shoved out of the back of the car, and he's laying on the ground with his leg like right here, like over to the side. I have a video of it. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to put it up right here. People need their turtle leg suit, man. I'll probably show the car. I'll show the video with the car here where yeah, the car don't, was. Don't show the leg. But I'm not going to show the leg. It's at least blur that out, maybe. Yeah, but it was. But yeah. you have pictures. Let me see now. Why are you not showing me? Um, it was absolutely insane. Oh, that's cool. No. Was, it, was he the only person in the car? <laughs> that's cool. I believe so. Or is everybody else disintegrated? Where is the video? Or did everybody successfully get their turtle egg soup? Yeah, that guy was totally uh Look at his leg. Look at his legs off to the side. You see that? Definitely missing a leg there. <laughs> right on. Yeah, so we saw that. <laughs> that Pretty interesting. Um 
But they have this. The, there's like these people that have like this side hustle, or it might be their full time job. I don't know if they have really side hustles down there. I think everything is just a hustle, maybe. But there's people that literally just drive their their cars on the main road because there's one main road. And apparently, there's like three, four, five accidents a day. And when the police go to it, there's no turnarounds, there's no exits, there's no things for miles and miles and miles. Uh, so when the police get there, though, they don't just close off a lane and let people go. They do a full-fledged investigation down there, and traffic is not allowed to move until they finish the investigation. So our driver that we had, he said that there was one time he got stuck in traffic for 16 hours. But we were in traffic for probably about three before we even got to where the guy was, um, which is sad because this guy is probably just laying there on the road for about three hours because that's how long it, we were stuck before we got to him. But there's people who just drive their cars up and down waiting for traffic jams. And when traffic jams happen, they just park their car. They get out with snacks and waters and all that kind of stuff and go sell their snacks and waters to people in the traffic jam. I'm like, that's really smart. That was really resourceful. That was kind of cool. So that's where California gets it. Do they do that in California? Well, there's all the the, 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 the roadside people selling things. Mm. Um. Yeah, you know what? As bad as traffic is here in America, it is the best in the world. Is it? I think so. Okay. Because of all the places that you've been to in the world? I just... All the other places that you... That that traffic is horrible. Like, there's TV shows about some of these places that traffic is so bad. Yeah. I remember... What was the... Where it was... Uh, the ice road trucker people, they did that show where they went to like one of the Middle Eastern countries, India or something, to to drive on those roads that were just absolutely insane. Do people like literally get out of a car, get into another car and drive off in it? Like it could, if they just they just leave their cars on the side of the road. There's no lanes. They the people just go. Yeah, I've seen other places where there's no lanes, but it's really weird because like surprisingly there's like Can you find that show the Ice Road Trucker show in India? Yeah, the Ice Road Trucker show in India because you know all the ice that's in India. Well, that's who they were. It was the Ice Road oh, Trucker they, people. They actually took the ice No, yes. but they, so they took the drivers or it was just the, the crew? The drivers. The, oh, oh, wow. Are you sure? Yes. That's weird. I I'm, I'm not okay. I distinctly know it was at least uh, the chick. All right. So. Um, it looks like they actually have like a spinoff. Truckers, truck drivers, some who have appeared on the history series, Ice Road Truckers, take their own extreme driving skills to much warmer climates. Yeah. Yeah. That was where they went. What's that one called? Do, does it, is there multiple of them? says two seasons it's called irt deadliest roads deadliest roads yeah okay. the ice road truckers deadliest roads yeah right. because they decided to that their their deadliest road wasn't deadly enough so they decided to go to other deadly roads makes sense like those ones where like people like it's a single lane road on the cliff of, of a mountain yeah that's exactly what i'm talking about and, and it's just like mud and they just hope mm -hmm. that they don't, like, slide away. Yep. And if they do, they get out of their vehicle and go get into one that they think they can drive. It's insane. It's insane what some of these places, what their road structures are like or their living situations. Like, it's crazy. That was a little crazy. Um, like, Mexico City. Mexico City is so compact. It's insane. Where in Mexico did you go? Uh, Cancun. Cancun. Okay. So just a resort area and everything. Is Cancun an island? Uh, Cancun is not an island. There is an island off of Cancun that's a really, really long thing of, like, beach. And then there's, like, a lagoon between that island and the mainland. Is that part of Cancun? Yeah, it's part of okay. Cancun. But Cancun itself is on. But it's right on the tip of the peninsula, the southern peninsula. I didn't know there was a peninsula. The so. Baja Peninsula? The what? Baja? The Baja Peninsula? No, the Baja, the Baja Peninsula is the one on the west side. Cancun is. It's like you go down My in Mexico and then, you, and Mexico then you're starting to go to South America. Dicks. And then it turns in, it like curves upward and that becomes a peninsula. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
It's a bunch of okay. You and your your penises. Well, peninsulas kind of look like flaccid dicks. Like Florida, it's kind of like just America's wiener just hanging out there. I've never seen a, a penis that looked like that. Well, then you haven't seen enough. Yeah, I hey, haven't yeah. seen. I haven't seen many penises. You haven't I guess. seen enough flaccid penises. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, they're all they're all hard. You've only seen hard penises. Yeah. Is there a country that which just makes sense to like me? I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you. I've seen more hard penises than I've seen flaccid penises in my lifetime. Okay. Right. I mean, you tell me. Not, I'm same with you though. Oh yeah, from your time of being a fluffer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I guess actually if that would actually be equal. But I'm just saying that would be an equal general, number of soft penises and hard penises. I'm just saying in general, well. like. I literally feel like that's almost everybody's statistic. Like, I'm not trying to be, like, me specifically weird. I think that's everybody's statistic. Probably. Because if you watch ev- any sort of porn, right. you're watching it, right? W- like, well into them. Most likely. Yeah. Probably. So, yeah, I, I feel like everybody has seen more hard penis than they've seen flaccid penis. Right. Maybe there might be some, like... Sports players that might have a differing opinion because of the locker rooms and because all because of the of locker that. rooms, doctors. Yeah, maybe doctors weighing in in the comments. Let us know if you've seen more hard penis than you've seen flaccid penis. Also, uh, let us know how many you have seen. Yeah, we want to know an accurate and count. the highest number will get a shout out yeah. on. The next episode. Yeah. <laughs> well, in a couple more episodes, probably. The next episode after, like, this, whenever. I don't know. The next episode we record after this episode is released. So it'd probably be a year you from now. You don't know what you're talking you'll about. You'll get a shout-out a year from now. Yeah, you'll get in a couple months. <clears throat> um, yeah, but it was uh, the people at the resort were really nice. There was one lady that I kind of really connected with. Her name was Karen. Um, of course. Yeah, well, no, she was so sweet. But the first connection that I had with her was during, like, the breakfast buffet. She was, like, sweeping, and she was sweeping under the table, and she had, like, one of those little buckets that you sweep stuff into. And then all of a sudden, she, like, sweeps up this piece of clo- She makes this face and, like, sweeps up a piece of clothing. And I saw it from, like, probably, like, 10 feet away, and I just walked up to her. I'm like, did, did you just sweep up underwear? And she just goes, like, see... Because, yeah, there's just underwear under the table, and she just literally just was sweeping up underwear. Okay. It was weird. What did you expect her to do with it? Well, I'm just – why was there underwear underneath the table at the buffet? That's what you should be weirded out about, not about the fact that this lady didn't want to touch it, so she I safely – I never said I was weirded so out about it. So she safely scoop swept it I didn't it say up. I was weirded out about you it. Sound, you made it sound like you It was a weird out, situation. You weirded period. out, but that she was sweeping no, the underwear. No, just the situation was very weird. I mean, it's a buffet. Did you say it was a buffet? Where, I did say you? it was a buffet, but what does it have to do with anything? Mm. You know what kind of people go to buffets? People at free resorts, at free buffet yeah. resorts, yeah. And sometimes they just got to let it out. So they take off their underwear. Yep. It's the most constricting part of your clothing, most likely. Maybe socks. Maybe your socks are the other constricting part. But, yeah, underwear is pretty constricting. So people just, you eat too much. You just got to <laughs> let it let out. It, let it all out. Yeah. Um, and then and then I stopped everyone's meal with Karen for dinner at a nice steak restaurant on the resort. Everyone's dinner was stopped and halted because I stand up and go, wait, 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 and go running. Oh, it was your underwear. No, it wasn't my uh, underwear. You realized no. it was your underwear underneath the table and you needed it back. Well, I noticed that all my plates were gone. I was having a conversation. I noticed all my plates were gone. Oh, she took your teeth. And I was like, my teeth are gone. So I stop everything, get up, wait, 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 go running after her. And then I get to her and I just go, I am so sorry. Give her a big hug. Tell everyone I'm so sorry to interrupt your meal. I thought she took my teeth. They are in my mouth. They were in my mouth the whole time. I just don't remember putting them back in. Why are you giving random cleaning ladies hugs? 
Because I, I, she was scared. I terrified her. Yeah, d- d- don't hug her. And then, the, but then the rest of the time, you she wasn't a cleaning lady. She was, uh, she was like a server. But she, okay. So it's okay to hug a server. No, it's still not. <laughs> you don't touch but anybody. Then, but then we had fantastic. That's, we had fantastic service people. the rest of the time. The rest of the time, it was great service from her. We saw her at almost every restaurant, and it was like instant connection. At every restaurant. Yeah, because they so just moved to a different. Are you sure it wasn't a different lady? No, and no, just being like Mexican. No, racist? they 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 share. They sh- well, she had the name tag and she recognized me and she had like that hair. And also, I think she was more Asian, so I don't actually think she was Mexican. Okay, oh, so so now we're back to Asians looking the same. Well, first off, we hadn't talked about that yet, and I don't think Asians. Well, look we the same. talked about it. Just you that, I don't think, think Asians cameras. look the same. Well, it's true. It's it's not even up for debate. It is a scientific. Like thing, like it's I I don't know why people want to debate it because they look different. They have differences. Okay. Yeah, but they're they're all the same. I think different Asian groups look just as different as different white groups. Some of them. So yeah, okay. Some of them, but not all of them. No. Okay. And that, and it all dep- I think it's all depend on person, but still it doesn't like change the fact of like they look that way because of like past events. Okay. Like Attila the Hun, the Mongols, like just fucking destroying the countryside and pillaging and raping everybody and it's like like i said like he has got like like a hundred thousand kids that they think like he is asia and it's kind of cool i mean terrible but cool yeah <laughs> it's a little weird and that's not even actually the only time that things like that has happened over there yeah like the asian continent has kind of been like it's rocked fucked yeah just through like c- conquerors and what about every things. 200 like, years right well, i don't know about that oh. i don't don't ask me about time yeah we've we've learned a couple years ago <laughs> yeah it was probably yeah, every couple years yeah genghis khan went through and just it was a couple genghis years ago khan that's another one that's the other one. So I I actually looked up the things like because he was a conqueror. Yeah. Napoleon was a conqueror. Yeah. Because I looked this up the other day and that these like because I, I was curious were these conquerors because there was other conquerors like you know the Hitler guy. Okay. He was a bad guy, right? I think all conquerors. Well, were but bad, he he was con- considered bad a bad guy by just about everyone except for the people that followed him. Yeah. People like not everyone at the time really considered Napoleon a bad guy. Not everyone considered well. Not like, everybody at the time thought was considered Hitler the savior of his land. And like so, and like and, and he, that's how. But he helped. He actually helped places prosper. Napoleon actually helped places prosper. So they actually did good things. Uh, and they like so. It's like. Are you saying Hitler didn't do good things? I mean, not for, not for masses. No, I think so. I don't think he did anything r- really great for the masses. I think I think Hitler's regime did bring us a couple inventions that helped the entire world. I mean, like what? I don't. We'd have to look out into that. Okay, but like, but like, Project Paperclip. Okay. Do you know what Project Paperclip is? Is that the little like clippy assistant no. on Word? No. no. Project Paperclip is after World War II, America hired uh, all of the disgraced like people that worked for Germany. Oh, okay. Yeah. And they brought them over here, and they had us. They had them work in like the military sciences. That's community. fine, but that's nothing that Hitler did. No, but uh, so. that but still even before that. Okay. He made some cool weapons. I'll say, I'll yeah, tell you that. There's some crazy things, but but I mean, did that, we have gas chambers before him? I, I would imagine. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Tanks. We had tanks. The before German him. tanks. Well, the German tanks were. That wasn't Hitler, but yeah. Yeah, but like we had tanks before that. Mm-hmm. The German tanks that all got stuck in Russian. Russian land. Well, that was their fault. 
They decided to go into Russia Without during f- not winter. <laughs> um, which, which, by the way, that is the best time to invade Russia. In not winter? In winter. Oh, in winter. I know, I know everybody says, oh, don't invade Russia in winter. No, that's the only time you can invade Russia is because when it's not winter, everything is just mud. And that's when your tanks get stuck in it. Winter is the only time that the ground is solid in Russia. Okay. So that is the time that you do want to go. And, uh, yeah. Good to know. Yeah. If, I'll keep case, that in my back pocket. In case the next time that you want to invade Russia. Yeah. I'll just keep that in my back pocket there. Yeah. Don't go during their three springs that they have in a year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> their weather is really weird. I think the magnetic north pole's in Russia. Maybe that's why. I had ice in my mouth. Yeah, you sure did. That was bad timing. Yeah. Um, hey. So yeah. What else about Mexico? <laughs> that was the cat. I don't know, something. Bowling balls. Um, apparently, like, their police are c- really corrupt. Yep. I mean, that's almost everywhere. Yeah. But they, they'll they essentially just, like, pull people over for nothing, especially tourists, and then just tell them that you're going to jail unless you give us, like, $2,000. Mm-hmm. And then you'll be like, well, I don't have $2,000. And then they'll pull out, like, one of those, like, square card readers. And that's okay. We can take a card. Mm-hmm. But it's just to them. They're just they're getting money for themselves. You did nothing wrong, and they just so. But it, uh, apparently, a lot of people because we were on like Facebook chats, a lot of people said that they got approached by the police and had that situation happen. And if they tell them just like okay, then take me to jail, the police just end up. Do you have like do you have five hundred dollars? Do you have a hundred dollars? Do you have fifty dollars? And then it's just like no, take me to jail, and then they just leave you alone because mm-hmm. they can't take you to jail. Well, I mean, I'm sure they could. Well, they can, but like they still have a justice system. Yeah. But yeah, this is why I don't want to go to other countries, especially countries that are considered drastically poorer than the country I currently live in. Yeah, like I just don't want to go on vacation to places like that. Oh, and that's speaking of that's not a vacation to me. I feel like if you go to a place like, yeah, it might be nice and tropical. That's how I felt about when we went to like Jamaica and the Cayman Islands. Like, yeah, it's maybe beautiful, but everything around here is shit. The indigenous people are dirty. Like, everything around me is shit. The only nice thing is this one tiny area that's not a vacation. That's stressful. I got to think about cops being corrupted. I got to think about my brother being kidnapped by somebody that was just trying to... Which I almost did. That's why I'm saying it. Like, vacations in other countries aren't nice. They're stressful. I mean, there is some stress to it. I've gotten over a little bit, but I'll tell you some of like the, cause you're talking about like the kind of like the filth of everything. I'll tell you one of the things I actually kind of do like, like when I was in Jamaica and when I was in Mexico are just the, the cement buildings that are just slapped up open to the air and everything's just kind of communal. I actually, I kind of like that. I, I mean, think I, it's, it, I, it's it kinda cool. sounds safe against a hurricane, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, but it's just like because you just you walk through. There's no doors to anything. You just kind of walk through, and you just kind of walk in, walk out, and everything's just open. I really kind of like just that. And also all the wild dogs. It's kind of cool. Wild dogs are kind of interesting. Yeah, it's cool because Same they're like with the cats. Same with countries that have like oh, an overabundance of cats. Of cats. Yeah. So. It was cool, but then I saw a bunch of bats, so I, I, we went into a cenote. I don't know what that is. It's an underground lake with a cave. So we jumped into that, and then we swam, and then there was a bunch of bats in the cave, which no one else went into the cave. I'm like, I'm going to swim into the cave. So I swam in, and there was all these bats in there. Um, but then there's a bunch of uh, there's t- thousands of iguanas. We went to like the Mayan ruins. Iguanas? Yeah, thousands of iguanas all over Tulum, which is like their main like stronghold on the on the ocean that like fought off the like the spaniards tulum tulum yeah that's what that is yep they fought off the spaniards yeah Yeah. it's not it's not the grandest um of so but there is a grandest tulum 
No, it's not the grandest of the, the ruins. The Grand Tulum. Of the ruins. Because we went to Koba, which was one set of ruins, which was weird. Ruins of what? The mine, like the mine, like Mayans buildings ruins? and all kinds okay. of stuff. Oh, the Koba one was the one thing that was cool wait, about the Koba. So wait, are those ruins ruins because the Spaniards? I just, uh, well, I think, yeah, because the mines, they stopped living and abandoned these places. So just no one's ever lived there and maintained them. Yeah, but that's like, those are just abandoned buildings. I mean, pier, like they're as, a, as opposed stuff, yeah. as opposed to like the Spaniards coming in and driving everybody off, and now nobody lives there, right? I'm not exactly sure what what ended up happening because I I feel like the Mayans kind of really well. I think like, they they went home. The Spaniards did. No, the, the Mayans. The Mayans. I thought that was their home. No. No. Oh, they yeah. went back to another planet. Oh yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, makes sense. But the one thing that was really cool, you know that, like, hip game? They hit the ball with their hips, and then they have the little hoops on the on the slanted, like... Oh, like in El Dorado? Yeah, in El Dorado. I was actually going to say, like, in El Dorado, but I didn't think you were going to know what that was. So, yeah, like in El Dorado. They had those in Coba. They had that. They Why had, would I not know what El Dorado is? I, I don't know what you've seen and haven't seen. Well, I guess that's fair. But, yeah, but they had those all intact. It was super cool. So we got to walk inside that court. Did you play it? No. But I but I thought that was probably the coolest thing that we saw there then. That was cool. But they had like a temple to like the wind god at Tulum. They have a thousand of guana. Guanas What's everywhere. the wind god's name? Uh, 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 can't remember. Let me look it up. I only know one of those like Aztec gods, and that's because it's in Final Fantasy. Mm. And what's his name? Quetzalcoatl. Mm. And what's he the god of? In Final Fantasy, he is thunder, lightning. Okay. Um, yeah, it's literally a thunderbird. So yeah. So the Mayan wind god is either Huracan. Uh, I don't like that. Uh, I think that's where we get hurricane from. Yeah, also know. known as Hanrakan. Mm. Uh, and then also, this is the one that we saw. This is the one. That's why I didn't really know because it it's weird. But it's you... K apostrophe U X. Yeah, that's K A J. That's more like U-K-X-K-J, it. Cux Kaj, and that's heart, yep. uh, and it means heart of sky. So yeah, but that was a uh, that was a pretty cool temple that we saw. It was right on the ocean. Yeah, that so. that one that you can't pronounce. That's that's the name I was looking for. Yeah. Um. Those that. It's really interesting to see, like, what some of the ancient language is over there because, like, as a stupid American, like, that's just Mexico, right? Like, it's Mexico, so it's Spanish. And I can read Spanish. Um, That's all Phoenician alphabet. I know exactly what everything is. Um, Wait, so, well, hold on. So we got to go back here for a second. So you can read Spanish. Yeah. Which is fu- like you can read it and you can read it and pronounce it and you know what it's saying. Or you understand every word and you know what the context is. Yeah. For the most part. How And how do you just know that? How do you know what the context of all of it is? What? What do you mean? Like, how, where did you learn the, like, how do you know how to read all Spanish and have the context of what it's saying? First of all, because I can read. Okay. It's not that different. I mean, there are things that are of all, very different. I have taken four years of Spanish. You took four years? I, I, I was in four years of Spanish. Oh, I did one. Um, can you speak Spanish then? Yeah, los locos pequeños están aquí. Um, anyway. Dos gatos azules. Yeah. Um. But, like, the Aztec stuff like that um, and the Mayan and, all, like, those words are really weird. Mm. And I don't – that that stuff doesn't understand. They who have, like – they use X's in weird spots and, like, the dog, the Zolo dog. That thing looks crazy. Just looks like – like, you know what those dogs are, right, Lilo? The bald guys? The Zolo I think I know what you're talking about. The Zolo about. dogs are the Mexican street dogs. I think. Is that the one like the like the mohawk? 
It looks kind of like a chihuahua, but it has like really weird, yeah, like, those wiry bald, hair the bald with the ones with the pointy ears. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. yeah. But like, what's what's the full name of it? Because like, it's not just Zolo, right? It's like a longer word. It's spelled X O L O I T Z C U I N T L E. Yeah, that's. And that's what I mean. We get into some of the more ancient, the ancient named things. It's a lot of a lot of uh, letter structures that I do not understand. Um, and uh, I don't know where that comes from. And I find it I find it pretty fascinating. It also just kind of like shows you how much Spain has fucked Mexico. And everything like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, actually, speaking of the, like, written language and stuff like that, mm -hmm. I, I've i always thought this, like, I've been curious about this, and I want to know, because there's, like, there's pictorial languages, right? Like, Japanese, like, a lot of Asian languages, right? Like, they can write, okay. they can write an entire phrase in, like, one of those weird tic-tac-toe like things japanese cannot Chi i think chinese depending on which chinese language can okay but like but that's a pictorial language right um no i don't think so oh i thought it was but no. anyways my my thing is is that i want to like is there dyslexia with that yeah is there yeah i would think dyslexic uh dyslexia comes from anywhere it actually is a form of thinking do you know people that have dyslexia think in three dimensions? It's really weird. I mean, what does that even... I mean... It literally means I that, I, like... I think I think in three dimensions. Apparently, no. That's not how that works. And if you do, then you have dyslexia, which would make sense because you... Have a reading disability. Yeah. Yeah, you don't read. But, uh... Yeah, there's dyslexia yeah. In, in other countries. Or actually... Actually, if you really think, could it be actually more prevalent in those because some of the th like some of those strokes look so darn similar? So could it actually be more prevalent? Well, so you got to remember that in I know for the Asian countries, it is learning how to speak and learning how to read and write are two completely different skill sets. Okay. Um like they 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 do take separate classes like how we would take English and things like that. It would almost be like them learning like penmanship but it's also a language. Because there is the difference between them speaking and them and them reading their kanji compared to I forget what the other way is called. But basically the phonetic way, which is how we would read Japanese, mm -hmm. right? Romanji. What's that? Romanji. Romanji, that's right. Okay. Um, um, the Romanji. So they have the Romanji. They have kanji. And then uh, the katakana. Um, and then that's and then they have the way of speaking. So it's very well. It's 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 it is one of those things that you could go to Japan, meet somebody and they can speak very, very fluent Japanese, but you give them a menu and they may not be able to read it. Okay. I don't think that's as true in Japan. I think that's a lot of other Asian countries that's true in, but not as but much it's Japan. It's true in Japan as well. Well, it's pro not as much, though. Well, I think I think what Most you're Japanese I, I think what you know how to read and that write. at that point is just like for lack of a better term, most of Japan is more civilized than more of the most of the other Asian countries. Yeah. There's a lot more like poor people, farmlands, um villages like that just are like out in the middle of nowhere in the other Asian countries. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it is, it's still a thing in Japan. Yep. Well, and then my other the thing, thing everywhere though, there's people in America that can't read. It's true. Yeah. Um, so then my other question though is about language is because you look at like everyone's like 
dot like whenever you look at a price on something, mm-hmm. it's got numbers. Mm-hmm. And numbers, non written out numbers, are the same everywhere. But do countries have their own? Yeah. Like, like not like like you know the letter or the number one, O N E, and then also the the number one, right? Do countries yes. have Japan yes. has kanji for yes. numbers? Yes, but like do, every country, but every country does. Every country, and then who? But then who decided? Britain, is Britain? Yeah. Okay, was that part of like the Commonwealth? I d- I don't know that they did that. Okay, I don't exactly know, but yeah. Okay. Like but, I'm I'm gonna boil it down to that. I'm sure there's a much bigger explanation, but yes, every country has Phoenician numbers because of Britain. It's the same way why we have an English name for every country. Okay. I want to know like when when did those numbers get created and when did they start being commonplace? That I'm not sure. Lilo, can you look that one up? And it's called Phoenician numbers, that's what that's called. Uh Phoenician, I would guess it would be Phoenician. That's what our alphabet is. Okay. How do I spell no, that? No, it's not Phoenician. Our number system was invented it's a Middle Eastern country. Oh, so it's not even Great Britain. No, it, I, I want to say it's India, but I could be wrong. I can tell you, one of you is going to be. At least one of you will be wrong. Both of you could also. Phoenician be wrong. is just our alphabet. Okay. How do you even spell that? The mathematic E N. Our earliest mathematics I A N was like. I want to say it's Indian, but I could be wrong. I guess whatever predates India in that area. Seventh century in India. It's India? Yep. The numbers we use today are called Hindu Arabic numerals. Yeah. Originated in India in the sixth or seventh century. All right. And it's just a set of ten symbols. Zero and then one through nine. Cool. Well, zero is much newer than that. Okay, I mean this says that it, it, they they made a set of ten symbols, so that's weird. I thought zero was invented in like the fourteen. Oh, there there were there were older systems that did not have zero, and they would leave a blank in that its space, making it difficult to distinguish between numbers like sixty three and six hundred and three. Nice. And okay. that and the predecessor, so the pre and but that was in the fourth century. That didn't have zeros. Yeah. And that was Cause I know Brahmi zero, numeral system. Because I know zero was is new like newer than the rest of our numbers. Right. Yeah. So not Phoenician. What was it called? <laughs> uh Hindu Arabic numerals. Hindu Arabic numerals. Yeah. See, this is all a lot of new information to me too. I just n- I I've been finding out a lot more about alphabets and stuff like that recently. Yeah, and oh, and the the numbers got introduced to Europe in the 12th century. Mm-hmm. Uh but it was introduced to Europe in the 12th century uh through writings of Middle Eastern mathematics. So that's where you got your Middle Eastern stuff from, Carl. Cool. Congratulations. Yeah, you got anything else? Been going for about 50 minutes or so. Cool. Let's go for another 50 more. I don't think that's necessary. Sure. Why not? Mm. You got anything else? Um, No, not right now. Right. Apparently. Um, nothing related to anything we've talked about so far. Okay. Yeah, everything else is going to be random stuff that I got. Yeah, it would just be like random topics. So maybe so I guess for the next episode. Um, Tune in next time if you want to hear us talk about other things. Other things. Why don't you... Less educational things. uh, But in the meantime, why don't you um, subscribe? Hit that notification bell. um, Like, like. Give us a comment. And you know what? Here's the thing. If you don't want to talk to us, cool. Cool. I understand that sometimes you may not have um, something to say about the topics that we have been talking about. But do us a favor. Just 
comment for algorithm. That's all you got to do. Thanks. You mean you don't think they're all going to comment about how many flaccid and hard penises they've Oh, yeah. 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 Flaccid and hard penises. Tell us how many, how many different, what's the difference between flaccid and hard penises you've seen? Um, if you don't, if you don't want to reveal that information on YouTube and or Spotify, just comment for algorithm. Just, just do that. Give us a like, give us a subscribe. It's all going to be on top of Danny's face. Um, yep. There's a last episode, next episode. No, um, next that yeah yeah here's here's the link to the next episode yeah no that's not how that works because we don't we you know what at least the next episode this is the newest episode last episode list of all of our episodes our channel so yeah uh, how many penises have you guys seen though <laughs> Not very many. Most of them have been flaccid.